And hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'll be speaking about accessibility for digital languages. Uh, I am Batoun Marzouk. I am the lead for the open science uh, community Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm the lead for the open science community Saudi Arabia, and I'm joined by Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, my name is uh, Abdurrahman Aswaji and I'm a Osaka community member and a bioinformatician working in bacterial genomics. And I'm happy to talk to you to, uh, about uh, increasing the accessibility for RTL language and uh, support in an uh, open source community. Um, thank you, Abdurrahman. Just before I start, I want to say a huge thank you for the Turing Way for the Open Life Science community. The Turing actually are in the phones today, so check them out. They also give a talk, they have all stickers. If you're in Berlin, yeah, pick one. I'm also using a slide from Anne uh, in a talk that I gave with her uh, back about internationalization, so check that out. We'll be sharing all these slides as well. Um, so before I start, I want to say um, I believe that all of you have some understanding of what open science is. Uh, and you think of it as a global movement. But if you look at the map here, uh, you can see that there is a lot of policies, there is a lot of grassroots organization of science everywhere except for the MENA region, and specifically in the Arabic speaking countries. Uh, and that's the motivation of us having to start the Open Science Community Saudi Arabia. So, Open Science Community Saudi Arabia really aim to provide a place where new community and individuals can interact and inspire each other to embed open science practices and value in their workflow and also to provide feedbacks and for services. Um, so we know isolated we're part of a global network started in the Netherlands called the International Network for Open Science Communities. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, we leverage and work communities of practice from the globe. We reuse a lot of their resources. We work with them to make resources more accessible to our community, such as the open life science that I've just mentioned, uh, the Turing Way, the Carpentries, the art community, and many other grassroots organizations in the land, which is this all part of the network itself. So, um, open science is a huge, huge umbrella, but in our community, we try to focus in some aspect that has been neglected in, in Arabic countries. These are like open innovation, uh, open, uh, open source, uh, verification, open license, uh, localization, research softwares, open education resources. Uh, the one that we, we will be focusing on in the talk is open source and localization. Um, the reason the slides is not very clear or yeah, a bit blurry, sorry for that. We're going to share them all. Uh, we're going to add them to Zenodo and share them, the link with all of you. Again, if you look at the map, again, for open source software contribution, specifically, uh, if you look for a very popular package, Python package like we should get download over 100 million download each month. You see that there's a contribution everywhere, but if you look at, again into MENA or Arabic speaking countries, there's very, very low, extremely low contribution. So the question was, why is that? How can we invest in better contribution to open source outside the global world? How we can really achieve more internationalization when it comes to open source? You might ask what this complicated word mean, what is internationalization in the first place? It basically means that during the design process for any open source project, even if you don't want to translate it, it has to be designed in a way that makes it easier for other people to adapt it by multiple locals. It's easy to localize. So internationalization in its essence means in some sort uh, has this accessibility aspect it facilitates localization. Uh, and again, what's localization? Localization is not a translation. Uh, it's taking it one step further to meet the cultural aspect. It has this contextualization aspect to it, which I'm not going to go really 
to speak about it more. Uh, I just want to highlight there's something called Translation Management System, TMS, which is very, very handy for people working with open source because it, it can be integrated with GitHub. You can create your own glossary. You can use machine translation. You also use something called Translation in Memory, which I'm going to revisit again. Uh, and yeah, uh, it makes this localization process very, very smooth. There are increasing communities that use these TMS or localization tools to localize their open resources to German, to Spanish, to other languages. However, uh, when you try to do that in write of languages like Arabic, when you try to apply it, it does not work as smoothly. Uh, this is often really neglected when speaking about accessibility, localization, internationalization. So we want to highlight that sort of a problem, which can be classified actually into two aspects. One of them technical and one of them cultural. This talk going to just focus in the technical aspect, which Abdurrahman uh, will elaborate on it. So I'm going to hand it now to Abdurrahman. Uh, thank you, Butol. Uh, so, uh, first of all, what's uh, RTL? RTL stands from uh, right to left, which is a writing system used in many languages, such as Arabic and Urdu and Farsi and many other uh, languages. In contrast, the most open source tools are designed to support left to right languages, which is create challenges for RTL language uh, users. When you look to the page, as you left to right speaker, expect things to start from the left. Uh, but uh, English from the left to the right, the beginning of things start to the left, usually. And the computer also expects things to start there. But in languages that are right to left, for example, uh, uh, languages like Farsi, Arabic, and Hebrew, the text to start from the left to right, the opposite. Uh, and we read it right to left. That is not the only thing that happens when your language starts right to left. The language is flipped around. Uh, according to W3, more than uh, two and a half billion people worldwide speak language using RTL from right to left, which is shown in, uh, uh, in the orange uh, uh, color. Uh, there are 12 languages with RTL writing system, and the most prominent example uh, include uh, Arabic, the official language in uh, at least 26 countries with around a half billion speakers and it's the most popular uh, language. The second one is uh, Urdu, the official language in Pakistan and India with more than 100 million speakers. Uh, the third one, uh, uh, Hebrew, the official language in Israel with uh, around 10 million speakers. So um, there are many challenges we, when uh, localizing open source tools for RTL languages. For example, if uh, a website is designed with left to right layout, but the content is RTL language, it can be difficult for users to read and navigate the site. This can be lead to poor user exp experience and can even make the site unusable for some users. As you can see here, there's some mixes uh, uh, from English word which make it a bad experience for uh, Arabic uh, readers. Another challenge is typography. This is specifies how font and other typographic elements should be rendered in RTL context. Okay. Um, another uh, uh, issue is the RTL script typically include instructions for things like alignment, text directions, uh, layout. Uh, for example, for the text direction, this is specify whether the text should be displayed from right to left or left to right. And uh, the alignment, this specify how text should be aligned within a block or container, such as uh, left aligned, right aligned, or center. And as you can see in the layout, the images, this is kind of how we can specify how we can position these images in the page, such as uh, uh, the minus and the navigation bars should be in the left or the right side or the logos. 
And by using RTL script, web developer can ensure that their website and application are accessible and user-friendly for speaker for, of uh, RTL languages. This is especially important for increasing the accessibility of RTL speakers or that have a, a large user base in the region where uh, RTL languages are commonly spoken. Uh, and then uh, here we think why, what we can do now. Um, this is a question come uh, to our mind. So uh, we spend a lot of time finding hacks and testing tools and circulate uh, it in the community. And uh, with the tool, we'll talk our approach. She will talk uh, with us to our approach. Yeah, thank you, Abdurrahman, for explaining it, for elaborating on it. So, yeah, we work with organization communities to localize their resources to Arabic. So we work with Outreach, we work with the Turing Way, with the Open Life Science, as I mentioned. And the thing that we try to do is that we create some sort of workflow that can be reused by other communities. We use something called translation memory. As you can see in this illustration made by the Turing Way, and translation memory means that even if we localize some sort of like two different separate resources, we can still reuse a lot of the structure, a lot of the vocabs, a lot of the glossary, a lot of the sentences, even if they are totally separate and not related to project. And that's what we call translation memory. So this is an example from the Turing, from the Crowdin when we try to localize the Turing way. And a lot of these TMS and localization platform, they claim sometimes they, they suppose try to love language. However, when you come and try to use them and deploy like whatever app or resources that you try to do, it does not really work that well, especially when you try to mix Arabic and English in the same sentence, as Abdurrahman just explained. Crowdin seems to be doing that quite fine. Uh, it seems also to support open source, so you don't have to yeah, do anything. Um, so we are creating this workflow that others can reuse them. Again, we everything is synced with GitHub. Uh, we use Q&A check. Um, we share our translation memory also with other communities. Um, it does not have to be just ours. So if anyone really trying to localize resources that is related to uh, open science in general, and they would like to reuse our translation memory, they're very, very welcome to ask us. Um, and our workflow, if we speak about the Turing way, for example, is used now across various languages, not just Arabic, the one that we use, but we have people coming from uh, Mandarin, Japanese, Spanish, uh, Portuguese. So a lot of languages really try and use in the same workflow that we use in right now. Again, all the materials, everything that we do is open source in GitHub. We link it to an audio. We make a site of all the OIs. So you're very, very welcome to come in, to ask, to reuse these resources, to contribute to it, to promote it, to join it. Um, and the last thing that I just want to say to truly, really achieve some sort of internationalization, equity, accessibility when it comes to open science, it's imperative that we embrace really and promote and celebrate this internationalization of open source tools. And yeah, thank you so much.